Hi, my name is Matt Otto. I'm a counselor here at Crossroads Psychological Associates, and I'm here with my business partner, psychologist Dave Gold. We're here today to talk about a question that a lot of our parents have, have brought up, screen time. Screen time in the time of the coronavirus and the lockdown. How much is the right amount of screen time to allow your kids and teenagers to have when they're locked inside? It's a good question, especially because so many of our kids are using screens, using social media, using video games, using chat rooms um, as a way to socialize with their friends. So it's not like when we were growing up where screens were simply you plopped in front of a TV and you either watched TV or played video games. It's also a great social outlet for kids right now while they're isolated from their friends. It's a simple, straightforward question. How much screen time is the right amount? And like most things, when you ask a mental health professional, it's not a straight answer. The answer is, de it depends. We're really good at that, aren't we? We had advanced degrees in not answering questions directly. It's really all about balance. It's less about raw amount of time that someone's in front of a screen, as opposed to how is that in balance with the rest of what they need to do, socially, emotionally, recreationally, responsibilities for school, because they're still going to school during this time, and responsibilities around the home. That's right. What I often emphasize when I talk to parents is, what's the end product that you're hoping to receive from your kid? Uh, what's the end product with their schoolwork? What's the end product with um, their chores and the work that they have to do around the house? Uh, physical activity, because that's especially important these days when we're stuck inside. Um, and also how they're treating other family members. So, for example, are they getting all their schoolwork done? And are they doing it to the level that you would expect them to? You know, if they're distracted by screens and giving their teacher a one-sentence answer about something that really should be a couple paragraphs, then you might need to dial back the screen time because they're distracted by it and focus more on schoolwork. If um, they're rushing through their, their exercises or if you're trying to get them to be physically active, rushing through doing that so they can get back to the screens, um, then you probably want to uh, dial back on the screens and have them really focus on doing their physical activity well. One of the benefits of looking at it this way is you can really talk with your, your teenagers about the why. Why are we doing this? Help them to kind of see the reasons behind it so that they can learn how to manage and regulate themselves as opposed to you just kind of laying down the law and having them comply with it. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, some kids really struggle with when they have some screen addiction is being respectful of those who are around them when they're either getting off the screens or while they're on the screens. Maybe they're not sharing well. Maybe they're throwing fits when it's time to get off. Maybe they're yelling at the screens because they're upset about something that happened in a chat room or in a game or something like that. Um, and so these can be great teaching tools for this isn't how we treat our family members. This isn't how um, you treat yourself. The screens are supposed to be relaxing. They're supposed to be fun. And when they be get to a point where they're not fun anymore, then maybe you need to turn it off and go do something else. So it can be a terrific teaching tool for what's um, appropriate behavior and how to be a good member of the family. When we're talking about balance, it's also a good idea for us as the parents to suggest some other things to do to keep in balance, just like Matt is saying, but even recreationally. A lot of kids these days, they're not even gonna think about you know, playing a board game or doing something interactive with their siblings and the rest of the family. They'll probably enjoy it once they try it, but they don't typically think of it on their own. That's one place where we as parents can step in. Yeah. Likewise, as parents, it's really important for us to model appropriate behavior. Uh, so many times, I, before this would all happen, I'd go through the mall and there would be a family walking through and the parents would be on their phone. Um, I'm, I know it happens at home too, where parents are uh, on screens a lot, whether it's looking at social media or playing video games themselves or doing other things. And as parents, we really need to set the model of what that looks like. Yeah, we're going to be on screens more at this point too, but how are we on screens? Are we modeling appropriate behavior? When we're getting frustrated with with working in front of a screen or playing video games or whatever, do we get off of it? Um, if someone ad addresses us directly in the family, are we stuck on the screen or do we take a minute 
to put the phone down and actually address our kids. If we get a text while we're in the middle of the conversation, do we pull our phones out and automatically start replying? Or do we say, hold on one second, I need to reply to this, this is an important work conversation, and model respectful behavior when it comes to screens. That's a great point. And I think that's a, a good discussion topic with teenagers. I've had a lot of teenagers who say that the right respectful thing to do is when I get a text, I need to look at it and respond. So when they do that, they actually think they're being respectful and doing the right thing. We might look at that a little differently. That's a good conversation, but it's one conversation if their starting point is, I want to do the right respectful thing, as opposed to the starting point being, nah, I just don't care, I feel like it. We should give them a little credit for that. Yeah, it's true. Our kids have a very different relationship with electronics and uh, than, than we did growing up. And so part of that from a parent perspective is learning uh, the perspective they have and trying to teach them a more healthy perspective when it's things that need to be changed and taught. Everyone stay safe during this pandemic. We'll be back and talk with you soon. Thanks for joining us again. Take care. With this being Teacher Appreciation Week, we wanted to take a moment at the end of this week's video to say a special thank you to all the teachers, administrators, school counselors, and other education professionals who are putting so much extra effort in at this time. We see and hear of the wonderful efforts that you're putting in, the extra hours that you're putting in, uh, restructuring your curriculum to work online, uh, learning new technologies, and all the wonderful things that you're doing for our kids. So thank you, thank you so much for what you're doing. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next week.